Good morning, everyone, and everybody listening. This is Connie Lingus here with. I'm here. I'm just not saying anything. Also known as Peter. Here for another edition of WNYU's very own category is Dragcast Extravaganza. You pronounced it correctly this week. I'm impressed. Thank you. This week, we're bringing you some discussion over Season 11, Episode 4 of Drag Race, and a return to the drag event spotlight, talking about Miss Cracker's very own solo show, American Woman, which made its debut in New York. But before we get to that, let's talk about the episode, and we'll start with the mini challenge. So, the mini challenge this week was... Why are you mad, Al, though? Peter, why are you mad, Al, though? Yeah, that's a really good question. <laughs> why are you mad, Al, though? I'm mad, Al, though, because all those looks were so bad. Yeah, you can't make Rachel Maddow a kind of historically, like, butch-leading lesbian into an interesting drag makeover for all the queens to do so everyone just kind of looked the same and oof all those wigs with the black suits like tell us in the comments when did you learn that rachel maddow was a lesbian for me (laughs) it was one minute ago it was an interesting challenge who won scarlet uh yes it was scarlet but It might as well have been random because... Scarlet was the closest, but that's just because she naturally looks like Rachel Maddow. And by that, I mean she's white and has a slightly similar facial structure. Other than that, it's not like anybody did a good impression. Yeah, no one can read a prompter, and it's kind of embarrassing. It it made me laugh just to see how many people mispronounce words. Silky. Normal words. Yeah, silky being amazed by the existence of the word colonel more commonly referred to as colonel i believe it's pronounced colonial yeah everyone was illiterate everyone looked bad and the winner might as well have been around them but hey what a boring challenge how do you get to show your originality by having everybody dress up as the same person just read things off of a screen read the same prompt yeah it really shows you how inexperienced they are with teleprompters too i'm somebody who's been using teleprompters for a while and i mean i guess i kind of take it for granted but i i assume that they hadn't read the script beforehand so yeah honestly it kind of just felt like a flex to me of look at who we have we have this woke guest that's reading long and participating it's all about them and when you've had nancy pelosi in the past do you really need to up the political ante i'm not so sure more people like rachel maddow than nancy pelosi though i think if you look at the favorability ratings that might not be true anymore that's a political reference nancy pelosi's at a record high favorability okay mr 538 moving on from the mini challenge we get to some workroom shenanigans that took place before and after the practice of the challenge. I have a couple things to talk about in regards to workroom shenanigans. First of all, Scarlett's hair looks pretty greasy. Looks like it probably smelled like KFC. It's not really related to anything. I just, it's a cunning observation I made while Looked like some of that Colonel Sanders chicken. Yeah, uh, yeah, Scarlett. Wash your hair. Something else that stood out to me was, we'll cut to this clip here. Evie looks like the Crypt Keeper, so she had to be Kellyanne Conway. <laughs> uh, man, that was uh, honestly a pretty darn accurate description of Evie. And as we'll get into, she was rocking that Crypt Keeper look for Kellyanne Conway in the actual challenge. I love how she like just shows off how she has all this extra skin. That's really cool if you ask me. Like, I didn't know it was up with her scalp at first. Yeah. And then I realized, wow, that's actually really fascinating. I'm sure I'm sure it wasn't fun to grow up with that as a teenager when you're worried about being judged for your looks. But looking at it now, especially in the context of Drag Race, that's really cool. Yeah, that's what I call epidermis. <laughs> I'm so proud of that joke. I, I don't get it. Epidermis is a scientific name for skin. Well, yes, but why Why is that a joke? It's a reference to that's what I call music. Oh, that's not a joke. That's okay. 
it's a fa- it's a it's a joke in the I didn't fa- get the joke because it wasn't a joke. Okay, it's a, it's a joke on. in the family li- family guy school of jokes. Anyways, honestly, the rest of what I have to talk about with workroom shenanigans is just kind of how serious of an episode I felt it was whenever they weren't doing a challenge like at first I was like when Nina started talking about her school experience I was like oh wow where did she go to school like sounds like she went to school in some podunk town when she brought up the story of Matthew Shepard it was like no it wasn't that she went to school in some podunk town she went to school in America which historically has demonized members of our community it was touching and kind of dark for them to kind of just go and focus so much on all these sad stories. Nina, I, I, I'm I'm starting to like her a little bit more in terms of just her attitude towards drag. She she reminded me in this episode a little bit like Sasha and kind of A being the default give historical context to something serious role that Sasha played in her season and be kind of just embracing the political and making it something her own. I'm not sure if you have anything to add to that. No, I like her attitude and I like her personality and I always have. Yeah. I, I'm just waiting for better outfits. Yeah, yeah. Though though I'll have some positive things to say about her in the actual challenge. In the, in the same vein of the serious, I thought it was interesting and also kind of strange and weird how Mercedes kind of handled her religion. I'm mad about that. I am mad because last episode I said she didn't talk about it. The producers tried. She didn't talk about it. You know what? That's her decision on whether she wants to talk about it or not. She defied reality TV expectations, and I was happy. And all of a sudden, you have this, and I'm like, oh, no, it was all produced. It was all produced. Yeah, from my understanding, they kind of just film those confessionals all in one go. So it just it's so disingenuous for her to basically have said, I don't want to talk about my religion. I'm awkward about it. And then imagining that same day in the recording booth, like, I am the new preacher for the Muslim religion. I've heard that they've either filmed, I've heard some people say they film all of the confessionals in one go, and I've heard some people say that they film the confessionals in the morning after. I don't really know which to believe. I'm just aggravated at how clearly produced it is, even aside from the confessionals. It's very clear that everybody knew Mercedes was going home this week. So that's why they specifically, either she genuinely didn't want to talk about it at first, and then they pressed her saying, look, you might as well, this could be the only chance that you get. Or... It was more of a situation of she was planning this from the beginning or they were planning it from the beginning. And either way, it just felt so fake. What was originally in a moment where she's like, my religion is my own and I don't need to explain it to anybody. Sure, they might have good intentions, but I don't need to explain it. That was the original moment and I liked it. And from that into, okay, clearly somebody scripted this. I hated how that happened. I really didn't like that. Yeah, and... Don't get me wrong. I feel no ill will and I'm happy for someone to use their drag platform to be a positive role model for something that they believe in and be a positive role model for Islam. I think that's a phenomenal thing. But in the way that it was portrayed in the show, it almost felt like shoehorned it. I don't want to say it felt disingenuous because that feels making claims about someone else's intentions. And I'll I'd... say it. It felt disingenuous. I don't know whether it was, but it felt that way. Yeah, I, I, I think why that is is because it was just such a quick turnaround on that issue. If it would have been like a season arc of her getting more proud and like her incorporating it into her drag in some way. Or that... even something that happens when they reunite all the queens for the tell-all. Yeah. I would have been okay with that, but this just felt so fake. Uh, yeah. Whether it, it was or not, that's the vibe I got. Yeah, and then, yeah, even going all the way to her elimination, it, it just it kind of rubbed me the wrong way. But I, I will say out of all that Mercedes situation, I will say that it, this, it kind of showed a, a sweeter side to Scarlet. Scarlet all being 
I guess we'll cut to a clip here, might as well. It is a terrifying time to be any sort of anything different, different yeah. in America right now. I just feel like maybe we let you down and not making it feel comfortable enough for you to do that. Scarlett's not mean anymore. Or, At least not as mean. Sure, she's a little arrogant, but you know what? I don't mind. I'm happy that we're seeing a different Scarlett, and I hope that that continues. Or I'm okay with her being sassy, but I like that there's this side of her too, and that is being shown. Yeah, it was almost Bianca Del Rio-esque, and that Bianca was always so serious and like cunning and cutting, but... She was a sweetheart at heart. Go Scarlet. You're becoming more and more likable as the season goes on. I, I, I'm curious to see how far you'll make it. There's one other thing in the workroom that I want to bring up, and oh. that's the genius, silky political strategy. Now, here's what she's done. Oh, oh, she's you... registered as a Republican, but she quickly clarifies that she is not a Republican. Instead, she did it so that when they gerrymander districts, she is going to be gerrymandered into a Republican district but she's going to vote Democrat. So as a result, she'll be able to influence the elections. Now, Silky, look, look, I get it. I'm sure that you feel it's a noble thing to do, but you're not so big that you take up a congressional district. Your strategy isn't going to work. I'm just saying. Yeah, that, that, that seemed a little silly to me, but... That's neither here nor there. It doesn't really matter. I just wanted to throw it out there. It's worth pointing out. It, it was a bit off and it was a bit strange that they even, I guess they had to include it because it was the political episode. But even then, it, it was the way to keep people watching through the commercials. Yeah, you're right. It was a commercial singer. With that, we come to the maxi challenge, which was Trump, the musical. Was it the Rusical or no? I'm tired of Ru puns, so I, I don't want to make it unless the show is making it. I don't and even. Th then I, don't I don't think the show it. called it the Rusical this time. I doubt Ru wants her name attached to anything Trump related. I think she's attached her name to everything in this show, and if she hasn't, people do it for her. That's fair. First thing I kind of want to talk about: Giannis versus Todrick. You know. People talk about how Todrick is a meanie pants and how... They talk about a little more than Justin being a meanie pants, but I guess you could say it that way. We're keeping it PG for the children listeners. Well, even beyond that, I don't care. That that thing with Todrick Hall and for Virgin Airlines is going to mean that I always appreciate Todrick Hall in a sense. But yeah, I, I just wanted to see what you thought. D did you feel that Giannis was any different any better or any worse than Todrick I felt he was just as mean I say in air quotes as Todrick was if anything he was meaner just making fun of a Raja who admittedly put that on herself by saying oh I I've danced this many things but it's been 15 years then being trashed at a dancing yeah he was just kind of mean I agree people criticized Todrick because oh he hasn't really done anything which isn't really true or oh he's so mean he pushes the queen so far beyond their limits and that messes with them so did Giannis I, I felt like this guy was pretty much the same it's just that since he hasn't been there for as long as Todrick people aren't saying that yet people are still more willing to just say wow he's so much better than Todrick because I don't want to like Todrick and he's pretty much the same I guess he's not as recognizable of a face but unfortunately he's never been in an airline safety video and for that reason I have to give him a thumbs down once he's featured in an airline safety video I'll change my mind tying into that I just wanted to talk about Raja we'll we'll cut to this Ooh, I'm sorry I'm sorry oh Raja you really embarrassed yourself this episode I don't see you staying for long she was in the bottom two. Again. She was in the bottom, or at least towards the bottom, of the lip sync from the evangel the televangelist episode. Yeah. So Raja is on thin ice. Not to mention, well, we'll talk about the lip sync in a bit. Yeah. Let's see what else to talk about with the maxi challenge. Honestly, the maxi challenge I didn't like. For a musical that's all about lampooning things... The writing has to be good. I thought it was kind of lame. And the performances, for the most part, weren't that stand out. Can I say this? Sure. Vindication for Ariel Versace. I think that it was there. I think that she did really well. Oh. At first, she was, like, kind of floundering. And she really needed to do well this week because she hasn't been looking that great lately. Her outfits have been kind of stale and repetitive. And I think that we saw a really good performance from her to the point where... Yeah, I would have argued that she could have been in the top. She wasn't. I would have put her there. 
I don't think I agree, but I'll admit some sort of bias because I was done with her with all of her compl- like her lame complaining throughout the practicing that when I saw her, I don't know, she just didn't really stand out in Trump the musical. But then again, I feel like very few did. I think that that's the problem. There were so many people and they tried to use so many jokes that it was tough to understand. I didn't know that Miss Vanjie was Rosie O'Donnell. I just kind of looked at that and I missed the people that they were saying. I was like, okay, yeah, they um, quickly... clearly they said people. I see Hillary Clinton. I forget who the other person even was. Miss Vanjie comes out and I'm like, who's that? She's Is that not supposed big. to be Elizabeth Warren or something? No, no, that was supposed to be Rosie O'Donnell, and it did not look like Rosie O'Donnell. It didn't help that she took the eye makeup, which is like a Miss Vanjie classic, which made it come out as, oh, it's Miss Vanjie. Yeah. I don't know who else it's supposed to be. Yeah, yeah. They should have gotten a bigger girl to do her, though I think we're kind of out of bigger girls at this point. Although oh, apparently typecasting is a problem. Unless you're silky, in which case you come out and it's like, whoa, is that Oprah? Is that actually Oprah? Yeah. It, it came. She came out and I'm like, it, it, it's Oprah. She complained about getting typecasted, but you know what, girl? You should be glad that you got typecasted because you played that part very well. Yeah, of, I think of the standouts from that challenge was her Oprah, Nina's Huckabee Sanders was pretty on point. Especially, I felt like that was a little underwhelming. But I think look-wise, it was like uncanny. And even more uncanny was Ginger Minja's Trump. That made me so uncomfortable. Oh, I, I felt extremely uncomfortable. I didn't feel like it was uncanny. I just felt like it was very, very uncomfortable. Yeah, I, I'm just like, wow, okay, kudos for bringing Ginger Minge back. And I could even, like, I thought that was literally a man. And, of course, Evie Oddly for the amusing Kelly Ann Conway. Conway. Yeah, the makeup was good, and she was overacting it. She did a good zombie. Finally, we move on to the runway. The category is Orange Alert. Start off, think best outfit. Evie's orange clown. By far. Wasn't even close. It was really, really good. Honestly, it was worth Evie winning. I think Evie might win this. I think I I could see Evie winning this competition. I feel like I very rarely see a clear favorite from the beginning end up winning the entire thing. But she, she she's had, like, z- zero missteps. I don't know what her missteps could be. Maybe, like, a sewing challenge? I'm just thinking that... But she made the outfit herself completely. So even then, I have faith in her ability to do a sewing challenge. She could act. She could do comedy. I think that she could. We haven't seen her lip sync. That's true. And the finals are all about lip syncing. But, but I am not logging in Evie yet. And I'm, I said it before, and I'll say it again. Her style of drag is different enough, largely, to the point where... It can be a total hit or miss. And if she misses, it'll hit her hard. That's true. And we haven't seen her lip sync yet. Another outfit I really enjoyed, a scarlet glittery gown. It it wasn't like the most radical thing, but she looked gorgeous. I'm sorry. I just thought it was kind of boring. Don't get me wrong. I thought that there were um, worse, but... I was just kind of bored by it. I just thought she was she looked very pretty, but yeah, it wasn't that stand out. Like, I, but at the same time, when compared to like Raja's outfit, which I didn't care for with a random shoulder piece, which I I'd didn't put either, a, I'd put that as one of the worst. But the judges loved that. I, I put that definitely above that. I love good looking asymmetry. Sometimes didn't really love Raja, but yeah, I liked the Kiria's wig. I, I liked that a lot too. I liked the wig. I liked the wig. I liked how it came down there. I mean, it didn't feel that orange, but I loved the style. It yeah. was very, I don't want to say minimalist because that's an overused word to describe it, but it felt kind of minimalist in a way. I liked it. Another outfit that might be controversial. So there were three casino girl outfits, Vanjie's, Ariel's, and Mercedes, all very similar in look. Vanjie's was my favorite by far. She looked gorgeous and when they were giving her critiques from the challenge and she like was taking it like her makeup was so good that whenever she like reacted with her face i was like oh baby's about to cry she's so cute like no i i I liked her casino girl the best it wasn't a bad design all i have to say is stop wearing red (laughs) i mean look i just there have been some people theorizing that she's going to make a point by doing everything in red I don't want that to happen. You need to show that you can handle a diverse set of looks. And plus, I want to see something different. It's not like red is just a color. Red provokes a series of emotions from the viewer. It's traditionally the emotive, passion, sometimes anger color. And 
you need to be able to show that you can do different things. Yeah. I don't want to see red. It was literally this week's challenge is orange. She comes in in largely red. I have a problem with that. That's fair. And it's sort of like how All Stars 4, the very first week they harp on Monet for doing the sponge thing. That was the very first week of doing something from a season past. This is Vanjie's fourth week of red. That's fair. I still think she's gorgeous, so so I don't let it bother me too much. I try to keep my criticisms passionate yet unbiased. I, I'm a biased mess. I am no unbiased. I thought that Ariel was really good. I loved the tassels. I thought it was boring. She looked like a casino girl. Yes, but she had tassels, I and I love the tassels. It reminded me. It's something Farrah would have done, and Farrah does everything better, so... Uh, no, okay, hold on. Farah does things better. Come looks, Farrah on. does looks better. Farah does. Farah, th- Farah had some of the best looks that show has ever seen. Farah's gorgeous. I'm not having this conversation. Bad right take. Now. Bad take. Oh, Bad. Nonetheless, finally, I think the one of the better outfits was Brooke's uh, fruit roll up jacket. I really liked that a lot. I love the fruit roll up. I thought it was super cool, super futuristic. Could have seen it like in a cool sci fi movie. Uh, yeah. And then the worst, I've mentioned them all. I didn't like Raja's random shoulder piece outfit. Didn't like... I thought that Silky's was boring, to be honest. Yeah, Silky's still doing the same stuff over and over and over again. She shouldn't have won. It should have been Evie. Yeah, but how many times... Don't get me wrong. Silky's Oprah was incredible, but Evie's Orange was even more so. Fair. Uh, then... Ariel and Mercedes, both boring. I liked Mercedes' headpiece. It's just that the rest of the outfit wasn't that much. What are your thoughts on Sugar Cane's Donald Trump? It made me uncomfortable, but at the same... Like, I liked it because it made me uncomfortable, but... And I'll probably remember that forever in my nightmares, but... (laughs) I, I definitely wouldn't say it was one of the worst because it was it was the most it was one of the more unique ones actually. We were talking about Rachel Maddow before. It looked like a cross between Rachel Maddow and Donald Trump in some sense. Yeah, it, it was, without the glasses, of course, but still, you know what? I thought it was good. I thought it was really well done. I don't think it was worth the top because I think that there were other people who edged her out. A lot of people were saying that she was robbed. I don't think so, but I thought that it was creative. I thought that it took orange in a different way, yeah. in what should be a predictable way but wasn't and mm-hmm. was still very pleasant. Yeah, I, I agree. And by pleasant, I mean pleasant in idea. Yeah. Certainly not pleasant to look at. Yeah, I agree. So, yeah, uh, finally we get to the lip sync, which was Raja versus Mercedes. Really no surprise there. And that lip sync wasn't even close, even despite Raja's wig coming off. I disagree. I think that it was kind of close. I, I disagree. I think Raja that... gave so much energy. Mercedes looks like she gave up. Mercedes did look like she gave up, but I thought that Raja's energy was just misplaced. I didn't think that either queen did well. I think that Raja's wig falling off is a serious problem as well. Like, what part of keep your wig on don't you understand? Yeah. If you're only, you should only be taking off your wig if there's another wig underneath it and it's a better wig. Yeah. And there's a reason for the wig reveal. That's fair. Or if it's specifically a gimmick to ditch the hair and it goes with what your outfit is. And her wig just fell off. And then she stopped to pick it up. I thought that she fell flat. Don't get me wrong. It was Mercedes's time to go. Mm -hmm. But Raja's on very, very thin ice. And with that is uh, the episode of Drag Race. Except we have Untucked. Specifically, a certain part of Untucked where I get to admit I was wrong. Vanji and Brooklyn are a thing. And that's wonderful. The way that they pressed it, the way that it was produced and discussed was cringe. Mm. But, you know, it's a relationship. It's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Good on them. Go I, them. Uh, I the, hope they make good babies. I, I think the PDA was a little bit much, but what can I say? I'm single, so of course I'm not going to like PDA. <laughs> and with that was season 11, episode 4. And now we'll move on to our drag event spotlight. We'll, we'll be talking about Miss Cracker's new solo show, which played this weekend at the Lori uh, Beekman Theater in uh, Midtown called American Woman. I actually went to this one. Yes, for once uh, Peter joined me for something. For once he was fun, kind of. Hey! <laughs> Just uh, because I can't drink doesn't mean I can't have a good time. Shout out to all our sober listeners. We out here. 
except you're not. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, this show revolved around just a discourse about our, our treatment of women in America. So it consisted of a few numbers by Miss Cracker, each kind of talking about a different way in which we should change our treatment for women. So she had a number about respecting women. She had a number about believing women. And she had some guests. She was funny and interacted with the audience like she should. Yeah. The price was a little much. $20 per person is a minimum for food and drink, though that was likely just restricted to the venue. Yeah, and that's not the venue thing. And that's such a pie venue basis that once this tours, because it's supposed to tour, apparently. You shouldn't encounter that issue, more or less. Um, she brought on some guest performers, uh, a burlesque dancer called Pearl. She did a number to an Alabama Shake song, which was great song. She did a great performance to it. Really, the audience enjoyed it. She's I, an actual woman. Yes. It, She's a real woman in a drag show. Yes, which Miss Cracker... She took actually, off a lot of her clothes. Yes, and Miss Cracker actually brought up that, yeah, that... She is a drag queen, so not a real woman, but she he, she still wanted to talk on behalf of women and also bring some actual women in the mix, so Pearl was one of them. And then another one of the guest prefer- performers was another drag queen uh, by the name of Izzy Uncut. And I think she did a very good job. Oh, Izzy Uncut uh, was one of the standouts of the night for me, I think. Uh, she had a number about women being told the to smile and just kind of like the horrors and uncomfortable nature of it. And it was really funny and also very poignant. The, the crowd also seemed to really enjoy that. I, I had quite a laugh. It's interesting because we're both men. I don't know about you, but I've never been told in the streets to smile. I might be told that by my family if I'm looking super glum, mm-hmm. but that's probably because they're concerned about my <laughs> mood or something. Yeah. But I, I don't know. My neutral expression is kind of a slight frown. Mm-hmm. So I feel like if I was walking around and I got told to smile all the time, yeah, I'd be really annoyed. I'd be really pissed. So, you know, that's an interesting point. I've never told women to smile before. And you know what? I will never tell a woman to smile. Thank you, Miss Cracker. Thank you, Izzy Uncut, for that. Don't smile ever. Exactly. That's um, the lesson we can take. Yeah. And just to talk about Miss Cracker, uh, she was really good at just, I think, controlling the crowd, keeping them laughing, keeping them on uh, their toes. She encouraged everybody to tip, and everybody did. Yeah. She she held a really good show. Yeah, and there was a decent amount of look variation. I say she'd have, she had like three or four looks throughout the night. One of them, in fact, was... uh, just a replica of, uh, like, the iconic look from Clueless, which is great. And, uh, I don't know what that is. So, <laughs> how I'm uncultured, I'm sorry. How can you not know Clueless? It's, it's, it's a... The gays and the straights love it, Peter. It's iconic. I think if you like Miss Cracker, or just even have a passing interest in Miss Cracker, I think... The show definitely does a good job at solidifying her as a unique identity. And the show is worth seeing, I think, even if you're just like a fan of Drag Race or you just want an entertaining like night out and a unique experience. You don't need to be into drag to enjoy the show. But there's definitely a lot of little in jokes with uh the show for sure she she performed in front of a a screen that had projections going on throughout most of it and so there was a lot of editing and some clips from drag iconic drag race moments that were particularly good and she was making references to the current season which was fun yeah it it was good so basically if if the show goes somewhere by you or she happens to perform the show again in New York sometime soon, I'd recommend it. Uh, Miss Cracker, I'll definitely be following you. You're, you're a sweetheart. Thank you for the advice you gave me. And with that, we conclude our show. This is Connie Lingus again here with Fair Champion on League of Legends. Make sure to add my account.
I don't know if I could keep that in. I might Do have... not keep that in. Super special thank you to Miss Darling Brother's song, Young Lovers, that's used in the intro and outro of this podcast. Thank you so much. And have a 